Welcome to the Unit 20 presentation. Uh, we're going to take a look at solutions in this one. We're going to talk about what different types of solutions there are. We're going to look at some of the terminology <coughs> associated with solutions and also look at uh, concentrations of solutions. You may want to take a look at Section 5.5 of the textbook before continuing in here. So, oh, crap. This presentation is going to be about Unit 20, uh, which has to do with solutions or concentration. What is a solution? Uh, how do we deal with concentrations of those? You ought to take a look at Section 5.5 before you view the slideshow. Here's a, the actual list up here. Definition of a solution, what it is, it's probably broader than what you think. Terms associated with solutions and concentrations of solutions. We're going to look at molarity and also percent by mass and percent by volume. We won't do excruciating calculations with those, but you need to kind of see how those set up and get an understanding of, of how we work with those numbers when they come along. So when we talk about a solution, really all solution amounts to is a homogeneous mixture of two or more components. You notice in that definition, nowhere do we say it has to be a liquid, it has to be a solid, it has to be a gas, it doesn't have to be any one of those in particular. And so and we can have quite a range of different types of solutions that you are familiar with. When you look at a solution, we break it into two parts. We break it into a solvent and into a solute. The solvent is typically the one that's present in the larger mass, uh, largest quantity. So when you take and throw a table salt into water, water is your solvent because he's in the largest quantity, and your solute then would be the table salt that you threw in there. So you kind of think of it in that sense. Now if you have a solution that's mixed with two things that are equal, you can argue all day long about which one is solute and solvent. In the end, it doesn't matter uh, at, at all. But what we do typically is the one that's present in the largest quantity is the one we're going to call the solvent and the solute's in the lower amount. Now since we have three states of matter, you might imagine that we might have different ways that these things can go together. And so sure enough that's true. So we have a gas and a gas Example of that is air, the air you breathe, has nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, whatever else is occupying that particular air. If I take a liquid as a solvent and I put a solute in like a gas, <clears throat> this can be water, the oxygen dissolved in lakes and ponds that allows aquatic life to live. This can be like uh, soda pop, coke, things like that because you have carbon dioxide dissolved in the liquid. A liquid in the liquid forms something, there's an example of that is alcohol and water. So uh, you can blend two liquids together, and that's, <coughs> that's also a solution. You can take a liquid as a solvent, throw a little bit of solid in it, and there's our sugar and water, our salt and water example. You can also take a solid as a solvent, and you can actually dissolve gas in it, which is an example of putting hydrogen into a metal. If you real high pressure on it, you can get the gas to dissolve inside of the metal. Solid and liquid, uh, you have a solid solvent, you have a liquid solute. Example of this is a mercury and silver kind of thing. You're taking mercury and silver, you're kind of getting toward amalgams, uh, toward, uh, sorry, amalgams, um, toward teeth fillings, things like that. And here is solid and solid. You have a solvent that's a solid, you have a solute that's a solid. So I take silver and gold, put a little bit of silver and gold, then gold's my solvent and so my solute's going to be the silver. So there's all sorts of a range of these things that you can have. Now, Let's look at some other terms associated with solutions. Again, there's a lot of text on here, but you can read this at your leisure. I'll just kind of run through the highlights of it for us. The amount of solute I have can change over quite a wide range. And so some of the terms that we've thrown into, let's, let's imagine this experiment. Let's say you have a cup of water sitting on your table and you go grab the salt shaker and sit there and start putting salt into it. When you first started putting salt in it, you have just a little bit of salt in it. It's called the dilute solution. It means there's not very much solute per quantity of solution, which could be in grams per milliliter, pounds per cup, whatever it's going to be in. A dilute solution doesn't have very much solute in it whatsoever. So if you look at the picture down below, here's a, a dilute solution. It's also called unsaturated. We'll see that one come up later. Dilute solution, not very many particles. Now, notice there's no special number that says now you're concentrated, now you're dilute. It's this kind of a, a qualitative thing. Look at a concentrated solution. A concentrated solution, you have a large amount of solute per quantity of solution. And so here's an example here of a concentrated one. Notice there's a lot more solute particles here in the concentrated than there is in the uh, dilute solution. Terms saturated and unsaturated solution kind of go along with dilute and concentrated, but not quite really. What a saturated solution was is, is it's a solution that contains all of the solute that it can under the given temperature and pressure. 
So in a saturated solution like over in here on the right hand side, I put all the solute molecules I put in there. If I put any more in, they're not going to go in the solution. They're going to fall out and sit on the bottom. Okay, actually go up and down all the time, but I can only get so much into that solution, and that's a saturated solution. An unsaturated solution is one that contains less solute than the solvent can hold at the temperature and pressure being considered. And so both the dilute and the, un and the concentrate are unsaturated solutions. They can still hold more stuff in them. There's one special case, saturated, where if you have enough in there, if you see the solid laying on the bottom, you're pretty sure that's going to be saturated. Then there's one that's interesting is, <coughs> is a super saturated solution. An example of this is we can take something like a ammonium acetate, put it into water, heat it up, dissolve a whole bunch at a higher temperature, and then if we cool it down carefully, it doesn't come out of solution easily. And so it's actually got more down at room temperature now than what it should be holding if it were stable. This is an example of how we make hot packs cold packs, things of that nature, is if you take that and then suddenly the, the solute comes out at that lower temperature, now you're going to have either heating or cooling type of solution going on. So there's interesting applications of these things all the way through. Now we're going to look at the quantitative solution part a little bit, and what I want you to pay attention to on here is we're going to do some straightforward, more straightforward calculations. We won't be winding it all around the bend and doing all sorts of complicated things. If you're going on the Chem 1, you'll do some more, compl some more complicated things there. But what I want to look at here is it, it's useful to have qualitatives like saturated, unsaturated, concentrated, dilute. They don't tell you much about that solution. So there's all sorts of different solution concentrations we look at. Uh, the one I picked out three that we're going to put in here just because these may be ones you run into. Molarity you probably don't run into too much, but you probably heard of percent by volume when you go and buy stuff in the drugstore, even percent by mass sometimes. Um, so what you want us to look, what I want you to look at in each of these is to start with. Key thing is they're all fractions: numerator, denominator, <coughs> numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator. All fractions. In the top, every one of the top factors has to do with the solute. Every one of them does. It's whether it's the moles in molarity, it's the volume of solute in percent by volume. It's the mass of solute in percent by mass. And so every one of them has to do with the solute in the top. And if you look up, down, if you look down at the bottom part in the molarity, the part down here is the volume of solution in liters. The part of the volume is, in percent by volume, is the volume of solution in whatever units your volume of solute was. And down here, the mass of solution down at the bottom. So all three of these have the solute on the top and they have the solution down at the bottom. It's just a matter of what units are you going to use. That's really what it amounts to. And so what we're going to do is we'll take a look at uh, each one of these can serve as a conversion factor down the road somewhere. We've done the conversion factors. We did grams and moles. Let's see what they do in terms of solutions. Before we go there, what I'd like to do is I'm going to take you to another one of these FET simulations. I don't know if you like those or not, but you, you can always scoot along if you don't like it. With concentration, it gets sort of a visual because some of you are more visual than algebraic. You're not going to see it in the formula. So we're going to take a look at... Oh, good heavens, what all do I have open now? Okay, uh, we're going to take a look at this. Okay, now this is a FET simulation with solutions. So why don't you look at over here on this side is we've got two things here. We have the solute in moles, and we have, we move them all up here high, and have the volume in liters. Okay, and this is a drink mix that we have in here right now. If you want to do something else, we can do that too. We can do, oh, potassium, what? That drink mix is fine, isn't it? Do potassium dichromate, uh, sorry, let's do drink mix. Looks like this. And so we have three columns to watch here. One is the solute amount, one is the solution volume, and one is the solution concentration. This is in molarity. The definition of molarity was moles of solute over liters of solution. So it's helpfully hope it's helpful here. It's measuring out the solute amount in moles, solution volumes in liters. And so if I just take my moles divided by my liters, I should get my solution concentration. Let's look at the numbers and make sure this is going to work out. So right now I have one mole of solute in 0.994 liters of solution. And if I take one divided by 0.994, I'll get 1.006 molar. Okay, it's all we're doing is moles of solute divided by volume of solution. Boom, here's my molarity. That's what it's going to look like. Now what's going to happen to my concentration if I drag this slider down on solute amount? If I drag this slider down, what will happen to my concentration? What do you think? You have three choices. Stay the same, get bigger, get smaller. What do they go happen? Since solute is in the top, it's a numerator, 
As it gets smaller, I'm going to expect to see my number over here get smaller as well. So if I start dragging down on this right here, down to here, now I'm 8 0.845 moles here, and I'm down to 0 0.850 moles on that side. And you see as I come down here, it gets less and less concentrated, which makes perfect sense because you have less solute in it. And concentration is all about the solute you have per volume or mass, or whatever it's going to be measured in. What happens if I drag this slider down of solution volume? What will happen to my concentration? I'll keep my moles the same over here, but on this side I'll slide this down. And when I slide this down, what's going to happen? Well, when I take him down like this, watch your number down at the bottom, my concentration is getting bigger, and that's because it's in the denominator. It's the solute amount divided by the solution volume. So as my solution volume gets smaller, then I'm going to find out that my concentration is going to be going up at the same with the same amount of moles in. and so this is one you can kind of look at and play with uh, again i'll put the link out for it in in blackboard if you want to sit with that and play it. there's another one out there too but it i've worked with it some and i'm just not sure it'll clarify things for you at all uh, but i can put the link out there for that one too and then let's go back here then right there okay and what we want to do now is look at some really bad slides about three of them you may have thought all of them are bad so far, but nothing's like these. We look at molarity first. Now, molarity is defined to be the moles of solute over the liters of solution. So what kind of things do we want to know? What should we be able to do with a molarity? Well, here's a question here. It says, suppose 15 grams of sodium chloride is dissolved in 250 milliliters of solution. Well, you have to have moles on top, and you have to have liters of solution on the bottom. You might identify which is the solute and which is the solvent. It would turn out that sodium chloride is my solute, and my 250 milliliters is my 250 milliliters of solution that I have inside of here. So I have to convert from grams of sodium chloride to moles of sodium chloride, and I have to convert from milliliters of solution to liters of solution. The mole conversion is one we did a couple of units ago. If I want to know the number of moles of sodium chloride I've got, I start with my 15 grams up here. This is a conversion factor approach. I multiply it by a factor that tells me there's 58 and a half grams of sodium chloride in every mole of sodium chloride, and it forces me to divide 15 by 58.5 and get 0.256 moles of sodium chloride. The molarity then, uh, but is my moles there? I have to convert my volume into liters. Milliliters to liters is a three decimal point change, and the number's going to get smaller because the liter is a bigger unit. And so I'm going to have 0 0.250 for my liter. So I'll just take 0 0.256 divided by 0 0.250. My molarity is 1.03 molar. <clears throat> Down here, <clears throat> here's a question. How many moles of ammonia are contained in 75 milliliters of 0.45 molar ammonia? One of the best things I can tell you about these is wherever you see a big capital M, that's our abbreviation for molarity, <clears throat> wherever you see that, Read that to your, in, your, in your mind as moles per liter, moles per liter, moles per liter. It's telling you how many moles of ammonia there are in per liter of solution. This is a conversion factor that you can use in your calculation. So I set this up, ask myself, what am I looking for? I'm looking for moles. How many moles do I have? I'm starting with 0.075 liters of solution. I want to multiply that by a factor that has liters of solution in the bottom so it'll cancel out and i want to have moles of, of ammonia up on top so i put in liters and put in moles when i fill in the numbers what the concentration tells me is there are 0.450 moles per one liter of solution and my answer comes out to be the 0 0.0338 the conversion factor method helps you keep things straight so you're not guessing okay it's not not helpful to guess and if we look at a couple of others percent by volume this is the volume of sol solute divided by the volume of solution multiplied by 100%. All percent is you take a fraction multiplied by 100. It becomes a percent, and that's all that is. So all I'm going to do is take the volume of solute divided by the volume of solution, volume of solute divided by the volume of solution, multiply it by 100 to get into percent. So here we say, suppose 15 milliliters of ethyl alcohol is dissolved in 250 milliliters of solution. Find the percent by volume. It's just a straight up 15 milliliters of ethyl alcohol divided by 250 milliliters of solution, multiplied by 100, and it's 6% ethyl alcohol. Okay, when you uh, think about liquor, you hear about liquor and proof and stuff like that, what proof, it, proof is is kind of like a percent, but times two. So 200 proof is like 100%. Now that's what that, that says in there. <clears throat> Down here, how many milliliters of ethyl alcohol are contained in 75 milliliters of 15.5% by volume ethyl alcohol? So again, you see this percent, think this is a conversion factor. Save that for later. Work with these numbers first. What are you looking for? I'm looking for milliliters of ethyl alcohol. 
What am I given? 75 milliliters of solution. And what does this 15 and a half tell me? Well, percent is just like this is how many parts I have per hundred. So all I have to do is go in here and say, well, that's like 100 milliliters of solution has in it 15 and a half milliliters of ethyl alcohol. Notice how milliliters of solution cancel out and you end up in milliliters of ethyl alcohol, which is what you wanted. You end up with 11.6 uh, error. <clears throat> that's an error. Um, Oh, sorry, it's not an error. No, I lost my mind. You get 11.6 milliliters of ethyl alcohol. Okay, so it's just that conversion factor thing again. If we do a percent by mass, it's not going to be remarkably different. It's instead of volume, it's going to be mass up here. That's all it is. Same thing, just says mass instead of volume. And now, if I look down here at some examples, suppose 15 grams of sodium chloride is out in 250 grams of water. Find the percent by mass. Be a little careful on this one. Remember in the bottom, this is the mass of the solution. This solution has both sodium chloride and it has water in it. So I have to add those two up to get the mass to solution. It becomes 265 grams. So I'm going to take 15 grams of sodium chloride up here and divide it by 265 grams and then multiply by 100 and end up with 5.66% by mass. Then the question is how many grams of ammonia are contained in 75 grams of solution is 15.5% by mass ammonia. Again, this percent, these percents, these molarities, Save them to the end. Save those as conversion factors. First, identify what you're looking for. We're looking for grams of ammonia down here. Second, what are we looking? What have we got to start with? We've got 75 grams of this solution right up here. It goes like that. Once I know it's grams of solution here, I know I want grams of solution down here. And once I know I want to end up in grams of ammonia, I want to put grams of ammonia over here. And the numbers I fill in just tell me that there's 15 and a half grams of ammonia in every 100 grams of solution. And so I come out with 11.6%. Okay, that's, that was ugly. It was short in terms of numbers of slides, but it's a little bit ugly. So you get some practice on this and a practice assignment, and you'll see it coming up a little bit. We're not trying to make you world experts at solution concentrations, but it's good to have a concept of this, how these things work, the, the solute-solvent relationships and solution relationships and that sort of thing.